Welcome into the Cowboys Report. We asked you guys which segment you wanted to see next, and overwhelmingly, you guys voted for Cowboys cut and trade candidates. That's what we have for you guys on today's show. Now, cap space isn't really an issue right now for the Cowboys, but roster space will be as we get closer to the actual NFL season. Now, I don't think these guys are going to get cut like tomorrow necessarily, but as roster trim downs come, the Cowboys will have some tough decisions to make. And as a reminder, of course, we're focusing here on some bigger name players because guess what? That long snapper the Cowboys signed to back up LP, yeah, he ain't making this team regardless. First up is Jordan Lewis. I don't like it. I don't think that many of you are going to like it either. But we got to discuss it because it is a real possibility, not so much of a cut, but of a trade chip that Jordan Lewis could become. The Cowboys re-signed Anthony Brown. They added three corners, two in the draft, one in free agency, all of whom are bigger and fit what they clearly want more than what Jordan Lewis does. And the Cowboys have explored a Jordan Lewis trade before, way back when, which feels so much longer ago than it, than it actually was, when they ended up trading away Travars Ward, they explored a trade for Jordan Lewis. They did. Now, of course, they kept Lewis, and I thought Lewis showed some promise last year. He was actually a playmaker at the cornerback spot, something that not too many of the other Cowboys players have been in recent years. But that is a potential trade chip here for Jordan Lewis. The, the numbers game at corner, as we'll dive into here in a little bit, isn't great. It, it doesn't work out from a math perspective unless there are injuries. So Lewis, as an undersized nickel corner with Anthony Brown potentially filling that same role, he might be the odd man out in the end. Now, I have a very important request for you guys. First off, thank you for watching the video. Can you do me a favor? Can you like the video for me? We're trying to get to 1,300 because I'll let you guys in on a secret. The Raiders channel, led by Mitch, likes their videos a whole lot more than you guys do for us here at the Cowboys Report. So just do me a favor, 1,300 likes. It's going to be like 10% of you at most. So just do me that favor, like this video so we can keep giving you guys more Cowboys videos all off-season long. Yeah, there's going to be a heavy emphasis here on cornerbacks, guys. Spoiler alert. Let's talk about Cheeto now. Again, he's not a cut candidate. Makes a lot more sense in a potential trade. And his range of, of roles in terms of his best-case scenario, his worst-case scenario, is pretty darn wide. He could still be cornerback one, especially to open up the season. He could move to safety. If Trevon Diggs and or Reggie Robinson really, really impress, he could be benched kind of crazy and he was benched at one point down the stretch last year so kind of an interesting spot for for Cheeto but much like Jordan Lewis he's in the last year of his deal the Cowboys have invested in corner that overhaul of that room is going to continue and I think a Wouzier might actually have the most value of any of the trade uh, options out there in terms of the corners the Cowboys could move on from now his role I think will be determined by those young players but it is an interesting spot for the Cowboys because you have three older veteran players, not including Daryl Worley. You have Awuzia, who got beat a lot more than you want and didn't make near the amount of plays on the ball that you want. But figuring out what your depth chart actually looks like when it comes to those top three guys of Awuzie, Lewis, and Brown for now is actually pretty darn tricky to actually pull off. So what do you want the Cowboys to do with Awuzie? K for keep, T for trade, C for cut. As I've said before, he's not nearly as bad as some of you might want to say, but he hasn't been good enough either. I lean more towards keeping him, but if a team offers you a decent pick and you trust the young guys on your depth chart, I think a trade makes a whole lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Maurice Canada, meanwhile, is a cut candidate because I don't think anyone's going to trade for him. The addition of Daryl Worley... I think Hurts candidates chances of actually making this team. In large part, look at the contracts. That's a real good indication of what could happen with a particular player. Only 200 grand of his one year, $1.25 million deal is guaranteed. And how many corners are the Cowboys going to carry? Awuzie, Brown, Lewis, we'll see where Diggs makes, where he slots in, but Diggs is gonna make this team. Robinson's gonna make this team. Daryl Worley got a lot more guaranteed then candidates, so he probably makes the team. All of a sudden, you're at six guys before you get to candidate and or C.J. Goodwin. Do the Cowboys go with seven? That's that. That's a significant amount of corners to roster. 
on an NFL team, normally you see six or five. The Cowboys went with four at one point last year. Like, they've gone thin before. They're clearly going to go heavier this year. But I want everyone in the comments to predict for me how many corners you think the Cowboys roster in 2020. And then once we have the number figured out, we're going to know who ends up getting cut and or traded. Now, Chris Jones has been on this list when we did it way back before the offseason. Because it just makes sense, right? You can save $1.4 million with, with a release of Chris Jones. And let's be honest here, he was bad last season. Last in the NFL in yards per punt. Now, that, does that mean it's all his fault? No, of course not. There's field position stuff involved there. There's also, you know, return stuff in terms of net average. That with injuries, allegedly, he hasn't been good for a while, folks. That, that, that is the reality of Chris Jones. I am s very confused as to how and why the Cowboys have brought in zero competition for Chris Jones at this point. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'd cut him because I can find a punter who can give me bottom end of production for less than what I would save with Chris Jones. But the Cowboys haven't pursued that. That doesn't make sense to me. Maybe something will change closer to the season, but for now, Jones is safe, at least for the time being. Speaking of safe, I hope everyone out there is staying safe. We have some Cowboys face mask covers for you guys. Three for 24 at chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. You also have individual ones if you're just looking for one mask. I want the Cowboys to play this season. I need everyone to be smart and be safe out there. So be safe, be smart, and rep the number one team, America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, in the process at chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. Let's talk about Tristan Hill now, because I'm sure many of you would love to trade him. Now, of course, it's all about cut or trade, and that's a noteworthy distinction for Tristan Hill. If the Cowboys cut him, they save zero dollars. Tristan Hill costs as much to cut as he would to just keep on your roster and hope he develops for another year. Now, if you can trade him, A, of course, you get the benefits of freeing up that roster spot, getting an, an asset back, whatever it ends up being, and you save a little over 700000 So there is some money to be saved if you can trade Tristan Hill. The issue for the Cowboys is, I don't know who wants that. Five tackles, one tackle for loss. The reality is, even though he was only 21, Tristan Hill was a bust last year. And the Cowboys drafted Neville Gallimore in round three. I think they're higher on Gallimore than they are Hill, given there's a new coaching staff in place. And for Hill, by the way, doesn't offer you much in terms of run stopping. He was an, He's a, a penetrating three technique type. Cowboys have Gallimore and Gerald McCoy to fill that role. I don't know what happens to Tristan Hill, but I think with the money involved, the Cowboys would prefer to trade him. So with that in mind, and feel free to get creative with your answers here, what would you accept in a Tristan Hill trade? What's like the bare minimum? Would it be a, a late round pick? Would you prefer like a, a used copy? Or like you got, you got a whole bunch of options in there in terms of being creative and being funny if you guys want. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Let's stick on the defensive line here. Joe Jackson, who I've seen a little bit of hype for in the comments, but if we're being honest, Tristan Hill was better than Joe Jackson last year. That's not saying much, as you'll see with, the, with some of the, 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 the production from Jackson, because it doesn't really exist. Five games played, like four tackles, barely got on the field. Now, the Cowboys figuring out their defensive end depth chart in their line and who actually makes the roster, a lot of that depends on what happens with Randy Gregory and Alden Smith. If both of them are reinstated and active and healthy and, and stay out of trouble, well, then you got Tank, probably Crawford, Gregory, Alden Smith, Dorrance Armstrong, maybe Bradley and I. Okay, well, now we got six guys at defensive end. They're going to carry seven? I don't think so. That means Joe Jackson, the fifth-round pick last year, who I think would be behind Bradley and I, because I think and I is a better player based on what I saw in college. I think that might make Jackson the odd man out. Could you trade him? Possibly. I don't really know if there'd be much of a market there. Maybe instead you tried to sneak him out of the practice squad after you cut it. I do want to mention Tyrone Crawford here as well, just because that's kind of the, the nature of, of this whole thing in terms of notable players. You can save so much money, right? Eight million you can save that amount with a release of Crawford but the team seems very content 
to just keep him on the roster, which is interesting to me. Like, you could have saved a lot of money. You could have gone and signed a, a, a Clowney, or you could have gone out and signed a an Everson Griffin. The Cowboys want to roll with Crawford, who does bring you positional flex, inside, outside ability. The team likes his leadership as well. I would have gone with a pay cut. I'm a little surprised the Cowboys didn't really approach that. So it's a tricky situation here for the Cowboys. And I'm sure many of you will vote Crawford or, or, or reply Crawford to this question. Who do you cut at defensive end? Because of the uncertainty around Alden Smith and Randy Gregory, I actually think Joe Jackson makes the most sense, and I'll include Jalen Jell, too, but he's clearly even further down that pecking order as my particular vote. Now, one more time, as a reminder, because I forgot to tell you, I'll put that link in the comments and the description, chatsports.com slash Cowboys Mask. They've got the face max there so you can stay safe and let everyone know who the best NFL team is as well. Of course, it's the Dallas Cowboys, folks. It's chatsports.com slash Cowboys Mask. Now, not every player that we discussed is going to get cut. That's just the nature of it or traded. But this we're focused on the top names. So I'm, I'm going to increase my percentage here by putting in a very obvious one. Kai Forbath. The second the Cowboys added Greg Zerline and guaranteed him a significant amount of money, they made it clear. There might be a quote-unquote competition, but it's going to be heavily stacked in favor of Greg Zerline, which, as Harris, producer Harrison agrees with me, maybe paying Giggers isn't always the best idea because Greg Zerline... Look at the past four years compared to Kai Forbath. Now, Zerline's leg is better. He's better on extra points. The field goal percentage is not great. But in the end, you can figure out what path the competition really ends up going. We're looking at the money. The Cowboys save $750,000 if you cut Kai Forbath. There's limited dead money involved there. Zerline has a bunch of dead money, a bunch of guaranteed money. So assuming Zerline stays healthy and or doesn't completely tank in training camp, Forbath's going to end up getting cut by the Cowboys. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.